Thought I'd make a little update video since it's been so long. I went ahead and put the front of the motor back together. Uh, minus the cooling fan for now. Uh, if you have this pulley off, make sure you put it on before the crank pulley because apparently once the crank pulley is all the way on, the water pump pulley will not fit. I think I've decided to mount the fuse panel just here on top of the battery. And then I'll put the relays either in this area or there's some room kind of back there on the firewall. This is the little harness that came with the micro squirt. Seems like it reaches good there. There's not too many wires that really go directly to the fuse panel. So, <clears throat> kind of what I've decided here. Is that I would mount the micro squirt here. Now it's kind of by the master cylinder, but you can always just pull it up out of here and set it to the side. I don't really plan on doing any kind of rigid mounting for it. Probably just some either zip ties or some kind of elastic or something. And really my only reason for that is I, I haven't found a good spot to bolt it to. If I get that factory computer removed over there in between the two firewalls, then it could probably go like that. But for now, I'm just put it here. I can always move it later. Harness will go there. And it should be a really nice dry area. I don't think it'll be too hot. Um, of course, everything is still fluid. Not to say that won't change. Went ahead and took the air cleaner off this engine and this is just incredible. I've actually never seen one of these in person. Even though I own the car, I've never taken the air cleaner assembly off. It's like this here is a uh, cold start valve of some sort, but it also has a line from the crankcase breather and then to the idle air control motor and also this black line back here that ends up feeding these um, black tubes that are providing air to the perimeter of the injectors because they are air shrouded. I don't know how well you can see down in there. Very interesting design. It's nice as the fuel lines are just right there. Um, right, right there. I don't know if those are factory or not. I would think it's more like a crimp, but it has some high pressure injection clamps on there, so I'm not too concerned about those. Uh, but the fuel's right there. The distributor has this casting right here that looks like maybe it's broken. I'm not sure what that is. It doesn't look like where it's broken at is too important, but here's something that's pretty incredible. So 
the throttle body is way down there. It has a linkage that's vertical coming up, going to some levers here, and then this rod just goes up here to the cruise control module or cruise control motor, which does work, so I don't want to get rid of that. But then it comes back here. And it goes to this wild contraption, which is... I really am not sure what to make of it. <laughs> it's absolutely incredible. It's got multiple linkages here and levers and pivots. It goes back there, it pivots off the firewall, and then there's another rod that's right there, and I believe that's what goes down to the throttle pedal in the car. And... I don't know. I took dynamics in college. You know, you did the slider crank and the four bar linkages and stuff, but this is just... This is just, I don't even know. It looks like it's pulling on a cable That red thing seems like a bellows on a cable Maybe that connects to the transmission kind of like a pressure control valve or a kick down cable I really am not sure what to make of that it seems incredibly overcomplicated, but it is impressive. The intake itself, I think once the injection parts are removed, it looks like it won't look too terrible. It's kind of a nice casting. It's got some bosses on it, but I could probably polish it up or something. <clears throat> this sensor here I believe is the coolant sensor for the ECU um, so I should be able to just reuse that port I may reuse the sensor but then that kind of goes back to me being reliant on the Mercedes parts availability so I guess when that sensor fails, I could always change it out for something else. This sensor here, I believe, goes to the gauge on the dash because I unplugged it and the gauge has dropped out. So I can leave that. That's nice that they're separate. There's some thermal vacuum switches here in the first intake track or coolant walk, uh, that's probably the coolant crossover. Not entirely sure. It might be kind of double walled in there. Maybe one is airflow and the other is coolant. It's got a another temperature sensor here. Let me see if I can get. So I don't know if that's manifold air temperature. It sure looks like it flows. Well, not too sure. We'll find out more as we take it apart. Not sure how I feel about all these thermal switches. I'm gonna have to try to find a schematic that shows what these vacuum lines go to. And what that temperature sensor is back there. So far I haven't found a good spot that we would mount one of those T-MAP sensors. So I may have to end up going with a uh, 
like a firewall mounted map sensor and run a vacuum line or something else and then uh, air temperature sensor either in the intake track going into the throttle body or find another port somewhere as far as mounting the fuel rails and the injectors it looks pretty open there's a little bracket back there right there a lifting eye that I may have to remove so it looks like the fuel rail would probably run right into it not too big of a concern otherwise it's pretty clear On this side there's more stuff going on but I think most of it is the mechanical injection system so once that's removed it should be pretty open as well the only thing that's somewhat concerning or maybe an issue is the back here lift this harness up out of the way everything is so hard so you can see right there would be one of the injector holes and this lifting eye is definitely going to be in the way but it's also part of the crazy throttle linkage that they got going on <clears throat> but it's been done before so I am certain we can work around it we have to cut this one out for the fuel rail and just won't have a lifting eye which it's not a big concern because if the motor ever has to be pulled, you could always bolt something to it. So I originally thought I was going to maybe start with the ignition control, trying to use a single coil in place of the factory Mercedes coil and retain the distributor. But in order to do that, I still need my throttle position sensor and the manifold pressure and temperature sensors. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just start by removing all of this and working on the injectors and fuel rails first. And then once I have all the appropriate sensors in place, then I can work on the ignition timing. I, I could probably do it with just the speed and maybe the manifold pressure, but I'd really rather just get rid of, get all the new sensors in place and it's going to have to be done one way or another. Alright, let me know what you guys think. Bye.